All right, so 30th of January, 2024. And I just wanted to give an update on how things are proceeding with the um, latest version of my 15 and 10 meter um, dual bander uh, that I've been working on. You know, I, this is the second time I've built this rig. <laughs> Maybe the third, I don't know, I've kind of lost count. But the reason I'm building it was because the first time I built it, I ended up with two filters, two crystal filters. One, both of them at 25 megahertz, but one using these kind of high rise crystals, the other using low rise crystals, the kind of low down to the ground crystals. The first transceiver, which works great, I used the, the lower crystals, but I ended up having this, this um, uh, crystal filter already built and ready to go at 25 megahertz. And then I started messing around with the uh, the VFO that I used in the other rig. And, and my, my problem was that I was using a, a variable capacitor with what I thought was a very neat little um, inductor in the, um, in the shaft, a planetary drive inductor. I've taken this, as many of you will know, out of the, the QF1 Q multiplier. I hang my head in shame, but I did. And the reason I like it was because the... The capacitance going up to about 150 picofarads was just right for the rigs that I was working on. And most important, it had a nice little kind of reduction drive in here. So I didn't have to worry about um, an external reduction drive. However, I, I found, you know, as you get as you get older, you become more demanding, more critical of your uh, creations. And I found that this thing had a, has a bit of a dead spot in it. You can see it here. I'm, I'm, I'm moving the shaft and the the rotor the the rotating shaft is not moving until you get you know so it creates that kind of dead spot it makes tuning a bit difficult so i started looking around for a different way to do the tuning and i remember i had in the junk box something that that pete giuliano n6qw had recommended that i buy and that's a a really nice variable capacitor with an anti-backlash reduction drive so it's the, the reduction drive reduction is the result of this gear and this gear but also this reduction drive at the front of it. And there is no dead space in this because these anti-backlash gears, basically there's two sets of gears with a, and they're spring loaded. So that when you put them on the smaller gear, one set of teeth is leaned up against one side of the gear. The other set of teeth is leaning up against the other set of opposing gears. It's kind of hard to explain. But the result is there is no dead space, so it, it tunes quite smoothly. You can see the, the big gear moving as I move the knob, and hopefully this will um, result in a, uh, in a smoother tuning experience here on 15 and 10 meters. I, I used a um, coal pit circuit, and a lot of the circuitry is around the back. It's based on JFETs. I kept most of the, um, the, the heated or the active elements outside the box, Inside the box, I have nothing but the, a capacitor, a couple of capacitors, uh, the coil, and the main tuning capacitor. So that should keep things cool. I've tested the VFO. It seems quite stable. And I have a, a little relay back here so that when I go from 15 to 10 meters, I throw the panel switch. And one of the things that it does is this second relay, a relay kicks in, adding capacitance to the culpit circuit bringing the frequency down to the range that I need for 10 meter coverage. So that's the, uh, the only small adjustment I had to make to the VFO to allow for the same VFO to be used on 15 and, and 10 meters. Now, um, it's, it's basically a bit X rig, but it's a dual band bit X rig. And I've drawn a little block diagram here and I'll go through and explain using the, the block diagram and the prototype board, the prototype rig that I've, I built it. Well, it's not really a prototype. It's the, this will be the rig. Um, but let me show you. So I have uh, here, here is the antenna in, and there'll be a low pass filter up in here. I've left space for the low pass filter and the RF amplifiers for the transmitter, which I've not yet constructed. I am once again following Farhan's advice and I'm building the receive circuitry first. So that way I'll get the receiver going. I'll listen to the receiver for a while. And only when I got, when I'm satisfied that the receiver is ready to go, I'll go ahead and build the, uh, the circuitry required for transmit. I, I then, you, you can see from the low pass filter, there's a, a TR relay up here that I will 
build and I have I have a few little little relays around here somewhere on the on the bench. Where did they go? There they are. These little guys. I might have to use bigger ones because these seems seems kind of these seem these things seem kind of kind of puny, but I have a bunch of them in the junk box. So I'll I'll make use of those or some slightly bigger ones. Anyway, there's a um a TR relay there. And let's just take a look at the receive circuitry right now. So from the TR relay it goes down to a second TR relay at the other end, and this switches between the input to the RF amplifiers for the transmitter or the receive slope for flow. So the signal from the on the receive side is going through the low pass filter, through TR1, through, through TR2, through a third relay that selects either the 10 or the 15 meter bandpass filter. Now I have a couple of dual tune circuit filters that I that I that have left over from previous from the previous rig. These are okay for receive. They're not quite as good good enough for transmit, but I'll just use them during the testing phase to test things out for receive and transmit. So this is the 15 meter one. This is the 10 meter one. And there will be a relay that switches both at the input and another relay at the output that switches bandpass filters for 10 and 15 meters. There we go. From there, we go to another termination insensitive amplifier. Now, my good friend Pete Giuliano has been, for some reason, I don't understand it, Harshly critical of the TIA, the termination insensitive amplifier. Yep, I, you know, okay, fine. You could. There's, there's different ways of building SSB transceivers, and I've built them different ways too. I built one with a um, with any 602s and uh, switchable inputs and outputs, and I didn't have any termination insensitive amplifiers there. But I like the termination insensitive amplifier because on both ends it looks like 50 ohms, and you can pick the uh, the resistors in there to set the gain of the stage. So for me, it's convenient. I like it and I've used it. I used it a lot. Um, this all is the result of uh, Farhan, of me asking Farhan and Farhan asking Wes. I think Farhan asked Wes before I asked him about what to do about the, uh, the, the, uh, the simple amplifiers in the, um, in the, the original BitX20. And Wes wisely prescribed uh, termination and sensitive amplifier. So each of these little boards you see here is one. And on one side, it's for receive and one side it's for transmit. So in this way, when you power up this half of the board, the signal goes this way. When you power up this half of the board, the signal goes this way on transmit. Um, from the bandpass filter, um, I, it goes right into the first termination and sensitive amplifier. And I have the gain set on receive at about 10 dB on transmit at about 23 dB, all right? So from there, it goes to a diode ring mixer, which you can see here on the, on the board. The diode ring mixer works with the VFO and it changes the incoming signal at say 21 megahertz. It changes it up to the 25 megahertz that I, went, that I need to make it through the filter, all right? So from here, it goes up to another TIA, TIA 2, which is set at about 23 dB, comes through here, goes into the uh, the filter, comes out here, and there's another TIA there. One of the issues I have to work on is the whether I need impedance matching or not. When I when I built this TIA using these this filter using these crystals, the software said that the impedance that is required by these uh, by this filter is about 25 dB. Now the uh, 25 ohms. I'm sorry. Anyway, the uh, the TIAs are at about 50 ohms. Uh, kind of close enough. I think that I could just take it and run it through there without a problem, or I could build some simple matching transformers to match them up, but I'm thinking that the matching transformers might not be all that necessary. I will hook them all up, power up the TIAs, and take a look through the Nano VNA and see what the passband looks like. If it looks sufficiently smooth and there's not excessive ripple, I might leave it just this way without worrying about impedance matching at either end. All right, goes through the filter, another TIA. You can see the other TIA there. And then it goes to another mixer. Here I'm using another um, balanced ring, diode ring mixer. Uh, basically, because we had so much good experience at this with the uh, the, the Thomas Jefferson uh, DC receiver project. I got used to building them, so I just built another one. On some of the other rigs, I was using just a singly balanced mixer using two diodes and one uh, toroidal transformer. Here I'm using four diodes and two, and this will balance out both the the carrier oscillator and the um, and the RF coming in, so that you'll you'll only have the audio frequency coming out. The carrier oscillator is down here. 
And this one took some doing. I, 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 need, it, I found it a little bit harder to get sufficient output to turn the diodes on. So this is why you, they call this a 7 dBm device. You need about, I think it's what, 0.5, um, uh, 0.5 volts RMS or something like that. I forget what, what the specification is. But you basically need enough so that, that this is turning on the diodes in the diode ring. And that's what allows for the mixing that produces, that takes the 25 megahertz coming through the uh, filter and the uh, roughly, you know, 24.7 or 24.8 megahertz signal coming up here and boom, you end up with audio coming through here. Now this is the, um, the audio amplifier. And here I'm using another piece from the, um, the direct conversion receiver project. It's, this is a real simple three transistor, common emitter, no feedback uh, amplifier right through here. And this will provide, this, this provides more than enough um, audio frequency power. It's, and it's really just dirt simple. Uh, it's identical to the one that we used in the, uh, the, the Thomas Jefferson direct conversion receiver project. And um, it works well there and I'm hoping it'll work here. One thing I'm, I'm happy with this thing is I have not, um, used any chips. I was re recently reading uh, Frank Harris, K0IYEs. He had got a great book, of course, Crystal Set to Sideband. Um, but he also had a, a wonderful uh, QRZ page. And I noticed on the page that he said that he didn't use any ICs in his rigs. And he considered any rigs that, that used ICs not to be truly homebrew. And I wrote to him, I said, hey, Frank, I said, that's that's a bold statement, my friend. Um, there's only two of us in the world who believe this. And he, he backtracked a little bit. And he, he, he changed the QRZ page. And we both kind of admitted that there is a time and place for, for using ICs if you really have to. My, my rule is I have to be comfortable with what's going on inside the box before I use the little black box. If I don't know what's going on in there, uh, I don't want to use it. But, you know, an op amp, yeah, I could use an op amp. An LM386, yeah, I could use that. Any 602, well, I figured that one out, I could use that. But I, in general, I'd prefer not to because when you're home brewing a rig, well, home brew it. If you're going to build the circuitry, build it. Don't just take a chip and pop it into a socket and say, ooh, I, I built it. No, it's, it, for me, it's not, not quite the same. So there's not a single IC anywhere in here, even in places where I need voltage regulation. I think I'm using a little Zener diodes uh, in the oscillator, things like that, to keep it to keep it simple. I'm really pleased too. Look at this, a provision. Even before I power things up, I'm making provisions for reverse polarity protection. I'm being a good, a good radio citizen here, and 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 doing doing it that way, and having that uh, taken care of before I uh, I do anything else. Because I don't want to blow this thing up <laughs> with reverse reverse polarity. Um, I have a I have a heat sink over here. So obviously, the things that I need to build, there's a few things that I need to do. First, I need to connect all of the sub circuits. I have this. This all started out. This is just a piece of pine, and I've covered it with um, copper tape with conductive glue. So this forms. Um, a very nice kind of metallic chassis. And you'll see I've taken each of the boards and I've connected them to the chassis. So there's a there's a big substrate going down beneath. There's a couple of boards on top here and that's just because I needed to have the the main tuning drive a little bit above the, uh, the floor, above the table. So that's just to physically raise it up. And this is, the, the, the VFO is bolted down quite well so it's uh, it should be good and solid. I kept the, the box that came with the Galaxy 5 VFO just because it provides a good mount for the whole thing. And um, and also, I think it provides a little bit of shielding for the, the coil and the capacitor and, and all that kind of stuff. So I what I need to do is I need to, first of all, I, I got to put in the relays. So how many relays do I have here? One, two, three, four, four. Yeah, at least four, maybe more. Uh, at least four relays on the board, put those in, power everything up, power up all the circuits. Um, then I need to take some some small coax that I have and connect the circuitry together. Now, some of these boards will move around a little bit because when I eventually build bigger bandpass filters, bigger, stouter, more robust bandpass filters for use on both receive and transmit, 
they will be bigger than these. And I'm thinking I'm putting one down here and one through here. And then the three stages of RF amplification will go down in through here. That's what this space is reserved for. And it's be in close proximity to the LP filter. This socket is for a control line that'll turn the, um, the EB63A 0.1 kW linear on and off when I key the key the mic. And of course, this is for 12 volts. And I think you only need three sockets on a rig like this. I've left space over here because I'm going to build for the umpteenth time the microphone amp, probably the microphone amp right out of Farhan's a micro bit X, the circuitry that has worked fine for me before. And it works well with my um, um, D104 silver lollipop uh, <laughs> microphone. Anyway, that, that's that's what we're doing. It, it, it'll, it'll take some peeking and tweaking, but I, I anticipate we'll have the um, the receiver operating this week. That's always a lot of fun. Farhan says that when you're building a rig and you get the receiver done, you should stop. Stop before you start plunging into the transmit circuitry and just enjoy the receiver that you build with your own hands. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to doing that. I think it'll work out fine. I think it may be a bit more stable. It's a better build than the uh, the previous one that I made. I'm going to enclose it in uh, in plywood, probably plywood with in, with an interior coating of this uh, uh, copper tape, and that'll give me a nice, uh, well, it'll give me a, a nicer um, RF, a bit of RF shielding around the whole thing. Um, anyway, I think it's it's a it's a fun ring. I'm I'm also building a second one because I want to take this one I think with me down to the Dominican Republic when we go down in June. Um, and that'll give me a, a homebrew rig to have there. The upper bands are, are in a lot better shape than they were just a few years ago. So um, and they're, especially 10 meters is providing a lot of DX opportunities. So it's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, it's just really fun, I think very gratifying to have on the bench a rig that you're working on, a rig that you're building. I, I find myself kind of uh, lost unless I have something that I can you know, come in and take a few minutes, put a few parts on, adjust things, test things, uh, see how it's going. The other important thing is, and I think you could see it here, the importance of building things stage by stage. I didn't just throw a whole bunch of uh, parts on a board in, you know, in accordance with a schematic. No, it's built stage by stage. So this is the audio amplifier board. This is the carrier oscillator board. This is the BFO carrier oscillator mixer. There's one TIA two TIAs, there's the filter, two different bandpass filters, another filter, another TIA. Now, when I was doing the TIA, I did I engaged in a, in a form of mass production. The first thing I did is I made the uh, Manhattan boards for all three, and I got a picture of that. I think I'll put it, I'll put it on the blog. And then, then I started putting down components onto it, onto each of them. I put down all the resistors on all three, all the capacitors on all three, all the transistors on all three, and then I, I had three uh, TIA boards built in the course of one one afternoon. You could do that. So these things, it does come together quite quickly. And uh, and now then the other thing I have to do is, you know, like I said, just lace everything together and fire it up, see how it works. Anyway, I'll, I'll give you a report on this on once it gets on the, uh, at least when it gets receiving and then hopefully when it gets on the air. And I hope I, I talked to some of you guys using this rig. Anyway, that's that's it for now. Please subscribe to the channel. I always forget to say that. And and click on the little bell thing so you get a ring when I when I when I post a new video. And also I like I really like the comments. So if you guys put comments on here or on the Solder Smoke blog, either way it's okay. I, I really like to get the comments and I like to get the feedback. So so thanks very much for doing that. All right, that's it for now. 7-3 from Northern Virginia.